remains a strong advocate for making the sustainable use of ocean and blue economy resources a development priority, holding the firm belief that significantly increased investment in this essential sector can end hunger, can also reduce poverty, create jobs, and spur economic growth. I urge the Secretary General to continue calling attention to the urgent need to develop this vital sector. In particular, I call on developed countries to invest in sustainable fishing, protect marine ecosystems, and share ocean-based climate solutions with developing countries. For our part, I am pleased to report that building on the historic 2018 Sustainable Blue Economy Conference in Nairobi, yeah. Kenya is reviewing its national blue economy strategy to strengthen community structures in participatory management of fresh water, coastal and marine resources, and ecosystems. The strategy is expected to contribute to our economic development through food and nutrition security, coastal and rural development, and income increases along the aquaculture value chain. It also enhances maritime transport and tourism. We invite development partnerships to invest in Africa towards building capacity to sustainably utilize marine resources. We must rally together to make the best use of Africa's vast blue resources in developing our economy while meeting our climate targets. As we look forward to the 27th Conference of Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, COP27, scheduled for Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt, it is logical to expect that member states will shift their attention towards the development and implementation of framework for climate change mitigation. Accomplishment of pending actions by member states is essential for the implementation work that lies ahead. I therefore call upon all of us to urgently deliver on all commitments made towards climate change financing. On this matter, it is critical to emphasize that we are running out of time. Over the past decade, Kenya has sustained its aggressive pursuit for rapid socioeconomic transformation through three principal roadmaps. First is the Kenyan National Vision 2030. Second, the formal long-term blueprint aimed at transforming Kenya into a newly industrialized, upper middle income country providing high quality of life to its citizens in a clean and secure environment by 2030. The second has been the Africa Union's Agenda 2063, and the third, the Sustainable Development Goals. Kenya looks towards tapping into a variety of resources to catalyze the achievement of these interlocking and mutually reinforcing objectives. The disruption and ensuing crisis due to COVID-19 pandemic compelled us to diversify our focus into new interventions, including economic stimulus program, a COVID-19 economic recovery strategy, and a COVID-19 socioeconomic re-engineering recovery strategy, all aimed at mitigating the adverse impact of the pandemic. Our funds have done the best of everything we could in the circumstances. Nevertheless, it is not enough. Kenya and the rest of Africa, like other developing nations, are in need of greater international partnership and cooperation to avert economic crisis in the wake of the pandemic. Developing countries being heavily burdened by external debt services run the risk of losing development aid due to the shock inflicted by the pandemic and associated disruption. I call upon global financial institutions and the international community to take urgent measures and release all existing financial instruments to provide much needed additional liquidity 
and secure better fiscal fit for developing countries like Kenya to enhance social investment, support climate change adaptation and mitigation, and address security needs, and resolve 